The seed is planted and will immediately start attracting moisture at a rate determined by electrical current in the seed. A high quality seed contains a lot of sugars which are made of carbon and carbon attracts moisture. Our seed swells up. The seed coat cracks, immediately sending down a root. Size and strength of this initial root is fully determined by the energy coming from that seed. Our seed then sends up a shoot. Size and quality is dependent on initial energy stored in the seed. Once our seedling has a leaf and the sun comes out, it immediately begins photosynthesizing and making sugars to feed plant growth from now on. 60 to 70% of these sugars are sent out through the roots at night to feed the soil microbes. Microbes, especially fungi, trade and exchange minerals needed by the plant from outside the root zone for sugars made by the plant. Fungi live on these sugars. The more sugars the plant pumps into the soil, the more minerals the plant will be fed by the fungi so long as there is available phosphate in the soil to carry the minerals into the plant. The more minerals the phosphate takes into the leaves, the more efficiently the photosynthesis machine is, and the more sugars are made. When a plant is photosynthesizing efficiently and making high levels of sugars, more and more of these sugars are fed into the soil to support the humus building process. Basically, a highly functioning plant builds and regenerates the soil. When the plant is making high levels of sugars, it is able to grow to be a high bricks or nutrient dense plant, meaning it holds a lot more minerals in its body. When a plant holds a lot of minerals in its leaves and stems, it has a strong electromagnetic field around it, stronger than if it had fewer minerals in its leaves and stems. When a plant has a strong electromagnetic field around it, it is able to attract from the air through its leaves up to 90% of the mineral energy required for its continued growth. This can only happen if the first 10% of the plant's mineral needs are met through the soil first. To meet those initial needs, there must be available phosphate and all the other required minerals along with microbes, air and moisture. So the higher the bricks or nutrient density of the plant, the more it is able to build soil and grow high quality food for nourishing all life on earth, enabling humans, animals, birds, insects and microbes to be optimally healthy. Our job as the gardeners and kaitiaki of Mother Earth and the reverses of climate change is to support this photosynthesis machine so that we can achieve family, community, biodiversity and ecological health and resilience. Very simply, if we do not provide our plants via the soil with the minerals they need to be able to photosynthesize efficiently, then they can never make enough sugars to be building soil and they will not have enough magnetic attraction to pull in from the air the potential energy that is out there for them. In this case, the plants will not be nutrient dense and will be degenerating the soil. Usually what happens next is that rather than working with the photosynthesis machine to achieve plant growth, our industrial world feeds the plants with synthetic nitrogen. Synthetic nitrogen is unable to catalyze the photosynthesis process like phosphate is. So the minerals carried in with nitrogen do not go into the photosynthesis machine. It does not work efficiently, the plant does not produce high levels of sugars and growth is pushed by the nitrates. This means that the plants are not carrying an electrical current that is strong enough to then pull in from the air the other 90% of the minerals that they require. Growing carcinogenic food with low levels of nutrients creating human and ecological degeneration. This is how our industrial food system works and it's time for us to change this. It's time to join the regeneration revolution.